Hi, my name is Doug Hoffer, and while I am the Vermont State Auditor, I'm not here in that capacity. I had the good fortune a few years back to work with a group of uh, food co-ops in uh, northern New England. Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, I enjoyed the work, and they've asked me to uh, say a few words, not so much about the findings of our work, but about uh, some of the things that flowed from it, and I'm happy to do that. Co-ops are an integral part of the growing effort to remake the food system. And this is no small matter because it challenges so many aspects of the status quo, including, for example, the notion that competition rather than cooperation is the source of innovation, and that a rigid division of labor um, and a hierarchical work environment are the most effective ways to organize work, uh, and that the cost of externality should be borne by society rather than the cost built into the prices at the cash register. All of these assumptions are undermined by the work of the co-ops. I know some of you may have questions from members and others in the community about, you know, why does it matter that we grow co-op jobs as opposed to jobs in the supermarket? Well, as we all know, there are some very positive uh, aspects and outcomes from such growth. For example, as we learned in our work here in New England, uh, co-op workers are much more likely to work full-time. And for this and other reasons, uh, co-op wages are significantly higher than median wages for the same jobs in supermarkets and big boxes. And that's obviously good news for the workers themselves, but there are other benefits. In addition, various forms of workplace democracy practiced in the co-ops provide workers with opportunities to gain valuable skills. And finally, back to higher wages, they tend to reduce the need for public assistance, which takes pressure off taxpayers who would otherwise subsidize low-wage employers, which is kind of a no-brainer. Um, other people ask, uh, you know, why does it matter that we sell, or that you, the food co-ops themselves, sell so many local products? What difference does it make? Well, they, they may not understand that buying local has powerful multiplier effects from recirculating money in the local economy. And for this reason, reducing leakage uh, of local dollars is beneficial to the entire community. Indeed, a dollar retained uh, from import substitution, which is what this is, is no different than a, a value of a dollar earned from exports. Increasing or re-establishing economic and other connections and relationships between urban and rural communities is essential to the health of both. Buying from local suppliers uh, gives co-ops uh, more control over production methods uh, by farmers and other food producers, and consumers have no control over such policies at supermarkets and big box stores, as we know. Uh, co-ops buy uh, directly from farmers in many cases uh, who can avoid middlemen and earn more for their efforts, uh, which they then invest and spend in the local economy. Consumers uh, often have opportunities to get to know local producers, and I think this has value, although we didn't document it here, uh, because folks who have a better understanding of the food system are probably more likely to support enlightened public policies about land use and water quality and energy and so forth. And finally, planning and, co and collaboration between co-ops and farmers can reduce risk for the farmers, which improves the likelihood of their success. Which at a time when small farms are dying all over the place, we need. Uh, you, you may have conversations with elected officials, members of the Chamber of Commerce, neighboring businesses, uh, and they don't really understand necessarily the value of co-ops, but there are some things you can educate them about. For example, we have decades of uh, experience and, and research and findings uh, to the extent that locally owned businesses are much more likely uh, to spend money buying goods and services in the community as opposed to chain stores. And as noted above, the retention of money in the community has important and measurable economic and fiscal benefits, such as jobs and taxes. And again, increased integration of urban and rural economies uh, can lead to greater cooperation on a regional basis for important regional issues such as land use, infrastructure, education, and the environment. And the growth or retention of open space for farming in or near urban areas is obviously going to improve the quality of life for everyone. Among other causes, the existing food system, I think it's fair to say, has resulted in an epidemic of obesity, which in turn uh, has led to large increases in the incidence of diabetes, and in addition to the personal tragedies, there are enormous added health costs as a result, and they are borne primarily by taxpayers. Uh, community leaders could work with co-ops uh, on to, you know, focusing on healthy food and healthy living, which are a key part of their mission. So I think in the end, uh, it's not an exaggeration uh, to say that co-ops tend to increase wealth in ways that are essential to healthy communities. Uh, for example, co-ops uh, promote individual capital in this case, physical health through the sale of natural and organic food products. And by their nature, co-ops promote uh, social capital, 
which is very important and often uh, neglected or not measured. They also promote enhanced natural capital through their support of sustainable farming practices and food production generally. And they also promote intellectual capital by supporting innovation in food production, uh, distribution, and processing. So this is just a, a small part of the great story that food co-ops have to tell. I celebrate your work and I wish you well.